I join others in commending Ralph Pantera for you know putting this event together. I commend in particular on the quality of the panels. I think that uh, uh, you have lined up for each of the four sessions very respectable you know, uh, individuals. Um, the last, there was a time in the past, in this country, where you get all the different data uniformly, you know, at the same time. These days, Central Bank needs a special collaboration with the Bureau for Statistics before you can get a consumer price index data on a monthly basis. They need a similar collaboration with the Bureau for Statistics before you can get the quarterly GDP data. And therefore, all the other information that they have been providing, on which they don't have any special collaboration with Central Bank, you don't get it, including expenditure including employment, and that is worrying. It cannot be that Nigeria does not have money to provide information on data that is this important. You will see that this government, and even some previous government, you have more of professors and doctors, academics in government everywhere. I think the problem we have is that the problem is in ourselves. We Nigerians were not patient, because if we say that Analytics is the extensive use of data, statistical and quantitative analysis, explanatory and predictive models, and fact-based management. That is analytics. We are not patient enough. We want government to take decisions now. But given this definition, how do you expect government to come up with decisions on every issue so quickly. So because we are not very patient, and that is why we think that uh, much progress is not being made in, in government. The other point I, I would need to make is that um, this government has made so much progress in that area, uh, and that is why we think sometimes the government is delaying. We want government to take decisions now using hunches, not based on any analytics. But you will see that this perceived delay in taking certain decisions is as a result of the fact that the government is applying analytics. The other point is that... Um, now, <laughs> let me also make this clarification. Um, my friend here has made, you know, um, gone into trying to... Um, assess the performance of government, that the government is trying to hand over you know, governance to the private sector. I think that is not uh, very, very correct. And I'm happy the moderator tried to, to cut it. More than anything else, uh, from basic elementary economics, we know that you know, government investments tend to, pri you know, to, to crowd out, what we call the crowding out effects. So these are empirical issues, but I think the government is not intending to hand over you know, governance and everything to the private sector. I think there's an act of delicate balancing which the government is, is trying to do. Now, the purpose of analytics in government is not to compete, as has been said, but essentially to, uh, to enable, as it were, to enable and also to drive performance management. So, in FIRS, for instance, in the health sector, you see that analytics has been deployed the area of revenue management and all of that. So a lot is happening. Um, let me say this finally, that our data is a reflection of our diversity, our mutual suspicion, and also our different interests. So many people are looking at data. So I'm happy, uh, you know, doctor is able to defend South Leader. It's not uh, so much about the quality of this data, but in terms of what we want to see, from that data, and to that extent, we tend to think that the quality of, uh, of data is a suspect. But in terms of recommendation, I think the public sector there is the need for more centralization and to navigate away from you know the silo uh, approach, and then to create the, the right analytical uh, uh, leadership. You be shocked the amount of data available in any sector: education, health. One or two years may not be available, but at least you get to say 2012, 2011.
So data is available. But again, what is important is the linkage. So the collaboration between um, those who provide this data and those who will use the data. This data is available maybe from MPC, from MPS, but the policy makers or the policy designers who should be looking at this data are not necessarily making use of that data or making use of the, the information available. So I think this disconnect is really what is affecting uh, policy design uh, and the outcomes we are getting. It's available, it's reliable to some extent. Um, the, the, the multilateral agencies we're talking about make use of it, add some guesstimations, use their rates, and, and come up with more current figures. But our own policymakers um, should also be doing the same and making use of the data to, to forge um, um, policies ahead. Finally, I just want to talk on the issue of budget also. Budget is very important um, because it's a very expensive process running this service. What we observe is that even at the level of MBS, at the level of MPC, <laughs> they would need to collaborate with the multilateral agencies to fund some of these services. So you're talking about household service, you're talking about um, um, employment service uh, across the country. A huge, huge um, investment. So they will need the World Bank, for example, the UNDP, to be able to help them fund um, that part of the uh, of the of the you know the survey. The rebate, for example, that just taking place now, it's a collaboration between the World Bank and um, the NBS. So in moving forward, I, I think that our government, you know, should on its own know that apart from expecting collaborations or waiting for a multilateral organization to come and help us fund, we should be we should start allocating resources for our own data analytics and helping to move that um, whole sector forward. Thank you. That means that if we are going to lift a level of relevance and application of analytics, especially in the public sector, we should begin to direct the attention of our government officials to the relevance of analytics in making Nigeria more competitive. Because the reality of it is that if we don't have the mindset that we are competing for resources from the rest of the world, we won't do what is required to make us more competitive. Now, the second leg to it is I've also had the experience where some recommendations were generated through the process of analytics, but the outcomes were disregarded. And uh, of course, we made reference to the this division earlier on. We have also this trouble submission of DT Rivers, which we did a lot of analysis on. And also now said, if there is going to be a waiver to any company whatsoever, the ultimate question to ask is, how many jobs will that entity create? So that was what we came up with from the analysis of that particular aspect. But we see over and over again that the outcomes of analytics are disregarded. So in which case, one of the ways we can also elevate its application and relevance in Nigeria is to begin to encourage institutions, agents of government, where this is actually done, not to disregard the outcome. The only issue of privatization we mentioned, when the current blueprint, that is what is commonly called the economic agenda, was designed. We looked at projects over a period of five years and we said, let's identify those that are banking and those that are not banking. The ones that are banking concession to the private sector, to be The ones that are not banking, you now fund from the budget annually through specific allocations to them. That was how it was conceptualized and detailed the level of projects and their values and costs. But what has happened? We've seen, for example, I won't mention the particular ministry, where a project identified as banking is now being implemented in that ministry and, of course, spending millions and billions 